oriented now that you see how it's all going to work. And uh, we sure are glad you're here. We've been working a long time <laughs> to get this up and running. So, uh, and like she said, this is your first year doing it. This is our first year. Congratulations! And, uh, so we're we're really pleased. We're really pleased that you guys are here because this is a hard this is a hard uh, place to make education work. There's just not <laughs> yeah. an awful lot of people, so you have to work really hard to get folks together. And so we look forward to uh, to working with you. Alrighty, I'll try and be on time. And it looks like it's time. My clock says go. So welcome. And uh, and so we're we're uh, we're pleased to introduce to you what's called GED Education for Adults. I'm going to get you to just rotate your chairs just a smidge, just so that you can see me. I'm going to try and be in your line of sight as well, um, and, uh, and we'll go from there. What I've discovered is that GED is different than adult education. GED education is primarily for people who have, a, a, have, have almost high school. They've got a lot done. They just haven't finished. Um, and so. And so they, they tend to be able, they come to the GED and they tend to have fairly good reading skills. Um, adult education are those that don't have very good reading skills. And you really have to start the educational process for these folks and <coughs> from the ground up. Um, and often it involves those with a, who, who have a primary language that's different than English. And so there's an awful lot of that. So what we'll be offering is GED education. Um, we, we'll try and get help if we can find help for, for areas that you, you need help in. But what we're offering is preparation for the GED. Does that make sense first? That that's, is that where you're all wanting is GED education? All right. Um, and so that's, uh, that, that's good. Um, I'm Dr. Brian. I do use my title, and so uh, you might see me in other places around town, and my title doesn't mean anything in other places, but if you see me here, I do use my title. And so Dr. Williams, Dr. Brian, uh, Professor Williams, any of those work for me. It's really important. Um, it's it's going to be hard work for you to complete your GED. And so you need someone that nudges you, nudges you hard, isn't trying to be your friend. I just want you to get done. Uh, and so for me, the titles give me a, a, just a little bit of nudging that sort of says, I, 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 I want to make, I want doc, Dr. Williams to be irritated at me if I don't get this next step done. Um, and so I'm the irritant, I'm the nudger, I'm the pusher, I'm the poker. I really want you to finish really badly. It's taking me two years to sit here in front of a class years to try and get this done um, and so it's been a boatload of work and I really want to see success so you're very important to me I'm glad you're here uh, I'm glad I have an opportunity of working with you and I look forward to being your guide on this journey um, uh, my goal is to help you succeed by creating a community around you one of the great problems with GED education is you're alone you left the high school environment. Often you're working hard in a job. You're, you don't have a group of people around you to support you. And so it's really hard to finish education by yourself. One of the great struggles of online education is you almost do so much of it by yourself. Um, and so what we first of all want you to feel is there's an awful lot of people wanting you to succeed. And we're just going to lay out a whole group that's been working hard to make sure it happens in our area. Um, because helping you succeed helps our community. You're going to know that in a few minutes. You're going to see how important it is for our community. Brittany, come on in. Hi. Don't go too far. If you'd sign in, there's a sign-in sheet there. There's a sign-in sheet there. And just do your initials right there. And if you grab one of each of the pieces of paper, there should be four in your hand when you're done. Thank you. Come on in. 
The theme that we picked for this for this project is let's change your future. Does that make sense for you? Let, let's change it. Let's just change it. Uh, and uh, and so come on in. There's one left. There's two left. You can pick either one of those, and then we'll start loading up seats if that others come. To them. Well, we're glad you're here. We're going to discover names and 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 things, uh, and that's going to be wonderful. Our our um, our schedule together is is we're going to be on a four week pro project for this. Um, I would like you here each Thursday night for four weeks. I think we can get a lot more done. Um, if you can't, then we've got some ways to cover it. But I really, really would like for you to be here all four weeks. Um, and and for you, as you're seeing, you're on camera. So I'm gonna, I am gonna record this and get it out to everybody else that can't get here. And there's a lot of folks that want to be here. And so we're gonna make it. And I alert you to that just to let you know that I do edit the, the, the this is not live, I'm, I'm, and I'll edit this, and if, if anything happens in here that you're not happy with, <laughs> we'll be happy to edit it and get it out of there. Uh, and you usually probably won't remember until later, like, the cameras were on, and I said da 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 da. Um, and so anything that becomes personal will probably automatically. Uh, I'm gonna do some introductions in a minute. And if you realize you've said something that you really didn't want the rest of the world to see, um, we can edit anything you like. So, but just I want to alert you that there is cameras um, uh, here, and uh, and so that's important. So when you come in on each of our Thursday nights, um, we'll do an we'll do some sort of an introduction or a conversation. As you saw, I had some reading for you, um, and often if you're early, and many of you uh, may may need to come in early, I'll try and have something you can read. Uh, while you're waiting, and obviously something that I think will be helpful to you during the week as, uh, as things to get your head around what we're trying to do. Today we'll do introductions of myself and each other, and we'll do that in a second or two. Um, and then I typically, after 15 minutes, and, and so there's 15 minutes here, that if something happens in your life, adult education, we know you're not purposely going to be anywhere but here. It's just the way adults are. Uh, kids, I'll show up whenever I feel like showing up. Uh, adults, you want to be here, you want it meaningful, and you want to get done what you need done. And you want to get it done as best as you can, as quick as you can. So, so we don't have often that kind of classroom management problem that you often see in many classroom settings. But if you do need to be late, I'm not going to say anything. I, we got 15 minute buffer here that I'm going to mess around and do stuff. And, and if there's just something we can do, I'll try and give students 15 minutes to get to class. Knowing that life is life. You've got kids, you've got family, you've got grandparents, you've got everything crushing in on you. Uh, you've got job responsibilities, you're commuting, you're doing all sorts of stuff. You're trying to be here at 6.30, but life is life. So just know that that's not an issue for me. I design it so that we, we really get going. Uh, at 6.45, though I hope that everything we do from 6.30 to 6.45 is valuable, and you'll want to be here anyway. Um, so, but that's that's how I like to design design these courses. We'll then go into our lecture content, and, and, and it's, it's really getting you comfortable with the GED process and the online process. Because my hope is, once you get the GED, you're not stopping. You're going forward somewhere. But so much of education now is online. And so what I want you to do is just fight the battles of getting comfortable with online. And you'll be going on the college online site, and which is used by hundreds of thousands of universities around the world. It's just, it's the major uh, online platform around the world. So that gives you a chance to mess with online stuff, get frustrated with, deal with the frustrations, and move forward, get to your education. That's what we want to make sure we're ready to do. So I just didn't want to do the GED. I wanted to begin preparing for your next step, which often is online education when you're in a rural place like, like McCall. You're probably going to do some courses online. And so I want you to become comfortable, and you know you can succeed at it, and you can deal with the problems. And so in our lecture content tonight, we're going to deal with what's the problem with high school dropouts. Uh, and so what does that mean for our community if we have high school dropouts? What's that mean? For you, it's just life. You just haven't got your high school. But for the community, it's huge. And I think I'll try and explore to with you how important it is 
that we do everything we can to get you in these seats. Everything we can. And, uh, and make sure the people out there know how important it is that you're sacrificing something to be sitting in here to finish this. Because it's important to everybody in our community. This is Lynette. She's my wonderful wife. And she just likes being here. Uh, she's always in my classes. And this is what she likes to do. If she could spend her whole life pouring copper for people, I think she'd be happy. Uh, and uh, so she just loves to be a partner in your success. And so know that. And so tonight she was she was having fun while I was doing other stuff. And so just just so she'll she'll be here as often as she can. She's often taught already today. She's a professional artist, uh, and she's a YouTube star. That's right. Uh, she has hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube, uh, many many subscribers, and so uh, she knows the electronic mediums really really well. And so uh, she'll help us, with, but she, she loves doing this, so we're glad she does. <laughs> and so what are we going to do to this problem that you guys are caught up in? Uh, and we're going to lay that out. We'll have a break about 7.15, and, uh, and, and then so it's usually 7 to 10 minutes. And then we'll get you right into the, the orientation for the GED. And our and what the homework is. Yes, there is homework. <laughs> Please do not assume we would let you off the hook like this. This is not, you know, yeah, the schools that don't do homework. This is not what we do around here. So um, here we go. Okay, let's let's start getting to know each other. I'm Dr. Brian Williams, and uh, I've had the privilege of serving. Uh, as a professor for many, many years, I originally, my first, my first teaching assignment at a, at a collegiate level was at USC. Yeah, that place that Casa, they, they want to pay a half a million dollars to get in the back door. I don't know if you've heard about that, but USC has been in this mess of people trying to get into the school. And, uh, and so I taught, I taught writing. I taught all the freshmen how to write. And it was more fun to give these 4.0 kids their first D. They had never seen a D in their whole life. But nobody who comes into a, a, a research university like the USC really knows how to write at that level. And so just know it's, there, there's a journey on this one. But my, I know my skills is teaching folks how to write. So I'll be asking you to do some writing. And the, the, the point isn't to embarrass you. The point is to begin the journey of writing because that's one of the expertises I bring to the team. Um, and I'll serve as the administrator. I cannot serve as a subject coordinator. I can't teach you stuff that's part of the GED. So I'm going to have to find people that will teach you stuff. I can't. The reason is I run the testing center. What you're seeing around you is the place where the GED is offered in McCall. So this is the testing center to get your GED. This is the goal is get back in this room and succeed and get out of here. Uh, but I run that and I cannot be an instructor. There are legal barriers to me being an instructor. So what my job is right now is get you going with all the available stuff online. Figure out what your, what your, where you are at and bring people to you that will help you with the content that you need. So. It's a challenging journey we're about to begin tonight, but it's really a wonderful journey. So I won't be one of your formal instructors, even though I'll be doing some of that. Uh, and I serve as president of McCall College, and McCall, and I'll explain that in a second. Uh, and I'm a, my, my professorship is in religion and social ethics, and so which is a philosophy. I don't know if you've ever heard about philosophy or read any philosophy, but the wisdom of humanity is philosophy. Uh, and so I work on how to make the wisdom of humanity work in people's lives. And that's what ethics is. How do you make it practical? Uh, the, the, the wise things that people have said over the centuries. You've met Lynette and I have three boys and we've lived in McCall for nine years. Uh, and so I'm honored uh, to have my family here and now my grandson is here. And so Oakley is part of our amazing family. And so we're, we're blessed. Uh, my heart is to help the working families of, of McCall. Pretty well everything I do, I do to try and figure out how to help the working families of McCall. This is a really hard place to live. Um, and so our family helps with housing needs, our family help, uh, helps with, with food, food resources, our family helps with, with uh, education as you're seeing now. 
Our family helps with spiritual needs of working families. We have tried to really, really be a partner to the working families of this region because we know how hard it is. And we have been overwhelmingly blessed. And this is our way of giving back. And this is a part of our give back to this. This is why we charge you $3.11. There, there's a point here. You'll, you'll know the point in a minute. Um, but there, there is a point there that I'll explain in, in a little bit. But we don't want it to be expensive because we know how hard it is. If I had to put the tuition at rate, which is $110 for this course, I'd have had one maybe show up because it's just too hard to find that $110 when you're a working person and I know that. So I charge you three dollars and eleven cents because I knew you could afford a lot. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> okay, I knew you could. So I wanted you here, and then and then you'll see how we're trying to keep you. Here. If you would go around and now give me your name, where do you live, and how long have you lived there? A little bit of your family would be great. What's your educational journey, and what do you want to achieve? I'd love to hear that. All right then. I'd like to hear from you what you think is if you if you look at your paperwork. I gave you an article from the New York Times called "The Cost of High School Dropout." What's the cost to you? We've heard a bit about about uh, about having to stop because your family needed you. That cost you a lot. What other costs can you imagine has been the price of not graduating all of our students? I had a full ride scholarship and I didn't ever get it taken down into that. Wow. That was fun. If you'd have graduated, you had a full ride waiting for you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can you imagine that? Yep. Thousands upon thousands of dollars it cost you. Mm -hmm. Thousands of dollars. What are the costs? How do you sense it has been for not graduating? Costs. It's cost you or cost your family or cost anything around you. Can you think of anything? We're going to lay out a few things. Not too many, but we want you to sort of get a sense of that tonight. But if you would, I'll come back to that uh, next week. So please read that and see how you react to it. One of the things that might be hard for you is reading. Okay? So I want you to do things like this. I want you to get a dictionary. I want you to put it beside whatever you're going to read. And I want you to use it. All of you. Get a dictionary. And, because that will give you the privilege of saying, I don't know what that word means. You open the dictionary and you start learning. <coughs> And every word you don't know, try and use it in a sentence within 24 hours. Every word you look up, try and use it in a sentence in 24 hours. Because the key for the GED is going to be reading. You've got some serious reading coming at you. And if one of your weaknesses is reading, you need to start the hard work of building your vocabulary. And you need to read everywhere you can every minute you can read 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 with your dictionary make your dictionary your favorite friend and get that thing going and get those words down circle it or take a highlighter and then try and use it within 24 hours and you'll start seeing your vocabulary and your 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 world will start improving immediately so i'd like for you to read it this week please don't you know, don't don't dodge it um, and one of the things, one of the things I'll ask of you is I'd like for you to do everything I ask of you. <laughs> everything. I, I don't I give it think. to you for options. I need for you to understand what's going on. And so sometime this week, would you read that? Okay? I have a question. Please. What do you recommend? Uh, use the dictionary, the book, paper book, physical, or... I always prefer books because you'll be reading on your break. On your break, you're gonna you're gonna have a few minutes and and take something to read for your break and take your dictionary with you. So having a computer, if you can carry your computer around, but most of us worry if you're gonna get stolen on the job. 
So, you, you know, but they're not going to steal your dictionary. You can leave that anywhere you want. Uh, and uh, and so t take it wherever you go and read everywhere. Anytime you get a shot at it, you see a paper, you pick it up, you read it. You see a book, you pick it up, you read it. You just start reading like maniacs, folks, because part of the GED is assessing your reading ability, and you don't want to trip on that. You want to get you want to get your reading going now. And many of you have been able to dodge it because you might think, I'm not a very good reader, and so you dodge it. Mm -hmm. You don't need to read very much. And so your reading skills have been degrading from the day you left high school because you just haven't needed it. You need to realize it, dive into it, and get going. Does this make sense, folks? Got it. Hard work. Got to do it. Okay? Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. <coughs> McCall College, you may not have known it existed before you walked in. There is a college in McCall. It's called McCall College. It's a private, nonprofit, independent college. We've been operational since 2011. We've been offering programs in business and computers, philosophy and ethics, and art. One of the things I was thinking about is, is doing a computer class right after this class. And I wanted to ask you guys if you needed it. I don't want to launch it if I don't need it. Uh, but how are your computer skills? Yeah, not very good? No. Okay. Uh, because high school is where we're teaching computer skills right now. But many of you might have snuck out before they even started teaching computers. Uh, or uh, how's your computer skills? What, typing or... Uh, well, the general ideas are you, you're going to need to know how to do it. Use a word processor called Word so you can write your papers on a computer. You're going to have to know what Excel, an Excel spreadsheet is for business, and anybody in business has to mess with these crazy Excel spreadsheets. And PowerPoint, which is this. How do I make a presentation so I can deliver an idea? And I can do things. Uh, you'll do no In design, you'll do nothing but PowerPoint yeah. your whole life. Uh, you'll do boatloads of them. Uh, so you've got to be really good at PowerPoint. Well, but PowerPoint is building off of Word and off of spreadsheets. It's the end result of the first two. Um, and, so, and so it's a course in how to be comfortable with computers uh, and so they don't, they don't drive you crazy. Uh, oh, they're always going to drive you crazy. But you can deal with the craziness when it comes. And you can get to these programs because when you hit this GED course, uh, these tests, you're gonna, the courses may be asking you computerized things, and the tests are all computerized. We don't want you to, to struggle with that. Is there any interest in intro to, to computers and Microsoft software? Yes. Okay. So. It's the future. I have a, I use a tablet for all my computer things. Uh, okay. Is that gonna be accessible? Uh, it depends if it works for you. Do you have a keyboard? <laughs> attached to your tablet. So yeah. one of the things you'd have to have is a keyboard that works on your tablet. Yeah, um, you and so if that works for you, and you can put the... It has a, it's like this big, so I can type on it. So you don't sure. have a keyboard. What well, you would need to get a keyboard to make this work. You you won't be able to write a paper without a keyboard. Okay. You cannot okay. do it by doing by hand packing. Okay. It is just <laughs> too hard. Too hard. I mean, when you're just sending an email or a text message, who cares? You can hit... You know, you can hunt and peck, and you're you're fine. If I ask you to write a paper, you're going to want a keyboard, and so we'd have to mandate a keyboard with your tablet, uh, and it has to be able to run uh, the 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 the, uh, the the Microsoft Word, uh, or I might I might think about Chromebook, um, I, but anyway, it has to be able to run some of this software. Well, I have a computer too. I just don't. So, okay. So if you wanted to bring your laptops for the next three weeks, bring them. Just okay. bring them. Just just try and take notes, mess with them, see if you can make the, the, the environment here work. Feel free to bring your laptops and see how they can work. If, if you did want to say, I have to be gone a week, and you can get your computer to work here, then you could we, we could try and figure out how to make, you, make it work for you. So I've done course, lots of courses on that. When would the last Thursday be if we're doing four weeks? Just September. One, oh, two, three, four. Sweet. September, Thursdays. So okay. if we start a course in computers, and I've got a lot of people have asked me, it'll be in October and November. It'll be, it'll be eight be weeks, October, November, Thursday nights, right in this block. 
So that's if I can find enough students, I'll I'll ramp it up. Um, okay, so that's 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 giving me a maybe. Um, okay, mission is to provide meaningful post-secondary education for you. We we want to we want to get you some education. But here's our GED mission: to op optimize GED and online education, leading to a GED. We want to help. Comments? Okay. So the need for GE education in our region is profound. Mm -hmm. Now, does anybody know the last time they opened up a classroom with GED education in this region? It's been a while. It's been a while. A long time. I talked to the person who was in the last class. Want to guess how long it's been? 15 years. years. 10. 10 yeah. years. And she was, where were we talking to? She was a waitress in, at, uh, at Grower's. And we were having lunch there and got talking about the GED. And she goes, oh, I was in high school. They shut it down when they changed it from paper to computers. And so there wasn't the ability to go from the paper GED to the computer GED. And there was no one that could do it. Um, and so they shut it down. Uh, and so it was 10 years since they've had a GED course in this town. So for 10 years, a whole lot of folks haven't had a pathway to get it done. They just haven't had it, an easy path. I mean, yeah, you could say, oh, I, I can go down the valley and it's do hard. this. Oh. Two hours. Yeah, with your family. With your, with your family and mm -hmm. cars and, you know, oh, heaven nice. help us. So, 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 so yeah. the, the, the 2008 American Community Survey data, and this is the data that goes with the, the census, so we're going to, we'll do this again next year, um, documents that approximately 10% of Idaho residents are without a high school credential. Okay, now look around your world. Does that make sense? One in ten doesn't have their high school. Is that about Seems right? Low. You think <laughs> yeah. that's low? Yeah. Now, why is it low? Because it is. It, 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 in some areas, it jumps to 20 percent. Right. If you have undocumented immigrants that are oh, high yeah. in your region, then the number gets to 20 percent. Right. Okay. But those folks typically need adult education. But your core 10 percent usually just couldn't get her done. Uh, and so I'm going to use that 10% number. Now, Valley County, Adams County, and Idaho County. There's the number of the population. Okay, so if you take that and you take 10% of that, that's what you get. That means in our three counties, there's 3,118 people that do not have their high school. How many people in the call, folks? How many people on the sign? 2,995 or some crazy number, isn't that a stupid number? That means the whole town of McCall doesn't have their GED folks. Isn't that a crazy number? Okay, so here's our goal. We want to provide comprehensive GED to at least 10% of our West Mountain Idahoans without a high school credential. When we succeed, 311 GED success stories will change the future. As of tonight, McCall College has completed eight. On these computers, we've done eight GEDs so far. Okay? So how many do we have left? 303. You're one of the 303. We want to get there. Your tuition fee is... Three dollars and eleven cents. Has the light come on? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm driving home a point here, folks. I want three hundred and eleven graduates. I'm gonna make sure you really sense what that number means. I'll charge you three dollars and eleven cents to prove it. You're one of the three hundred and eleven. Okay? It's that important to us. Okay? We want you to be one of them. What's the cost to you? And folks, this may be the most important slide tonight, so I really want you to focus on this. The lost dropout income per year in America, if you don't have your high school, is $10,386. Now, just, just make sure this number rings for you. If you had your high school, could you get a job for $30,000? Because typically what you're going to make now is $20,000 a year. If you get your high school, do you realize jobs paying $30,000 
are now available to you. Does that ring true? Think of over a lifetime how much that is. Now, do that. So, so, so here we've got we've got a, a high school dropout can can expect to earn an average would be twenty thousand. If that, that's what that's what in, in America that's what you're going to get paid for the rest of your life, twenty grand a year. Okay, you get your high school credential, you get your GED, it jumps to thirty thousand. That's ten thousand bucks you're missing. Right now, right now tonight, you're missing. How much is ten thousand bucks a year, folks? Divided by twelve. Somebody do the mental math. <laughs> this is tough. Okay. What is it about? Twenty thousand. No. How much per month are you losing? Divide ten thousand by twelve. How much are you losing a month? Because you guys work in monthly allotments. Yeah. About eight hundred and seventy. About eight hundred and seventy bucks a month. How many of you would like to have another eight hundred and seventy-five bucks a month in your paycheck? Yeah, that's I mean, you know how hard it is to walk into the boss and say, "I'd like another dollar an hour." <laughs> no, 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 folks, do this. This is a whole lot faster way to get. 875 bucks into your pocket okay this is the way to do it folks the numbers are sound everybody agrees with these numbers this is what you're going to put Tax. in your pocket now the other side is what does it cost our community if you drop out of high school in your lifetime it's two hundred and ninety two thousand dollars a dropout will end up costing to pack stairs an average of two hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars. That's a house in McCall over the lifetime due to the price tag associated with incarceration and other factors uh, of, uh, uh, on how much less they pay in taxes. The minute you go up to thirty thousand, they get more money because you're paying taxes. You're getting a better house. They're going to get more money. You're getting a better job. You're getting more money. You're spending it all over the town. They're getting that money. So, and, and then if you have problems, you know, it, 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 our, our dropouts have a much higher rate of problems because you're only making 20 grand a year. So how many of them drop into drugs because they need a few extra bucks and they start slipping it under the table? And then all of a sudden the police show up and then all of a sudden the parole office shows up. All of those folks have got to get paid and in between you got to go to jail to deal with it and, and think of how that's all getting paid. So because you're only making 20000 a year, the costs that start flowing out of that, the county and the, these That's counties great. are having to pay to keep up with our dropout rate. And so if we can sketch you up to that next pay level, life is so much better, and now all these things start happening. Mm -hmm. let's, let's add it up. The average lost regional income, if we don't graduate 311 people, is $3 million annual income. A year. $3 million a year. Think of it better. When we succeed, we're dropping $3 million bucks into all of the pots of our region. We are dropping $3 million bucks if we succeed with 311 if we don't, the lifetime cost of those same 311 is $90 million. Do you see why we want to succeed at helping you guys? It is really, 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 really important. Comments? Questions? Thank you. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. I, I just, I must have sat there for 20 minutes when I saw these numbers. Well, you already know, like, just, poverty levels, right? And crime rates. Mm -hmm. and that's right. I know all that, but you never put it into, like, GED, you know? But that's, like, the basics, right? Where it all starts. It, it does. High school education. It does. And, we're, and we're not trying to pin anything on you. Right. You're just where you're at. Right, right, right. But, but, but when we look at the entire nation, and we've done a terrible job when seven, basically seven out of, out of ten are not getting out of high school 
in this nation now. Seven out of 10, that's 30% folks. I'm only talking 10 to 20%. The real hard numbers in lots of places, 30%. Are. Now watch these numbers go nutty. If you're saying 30% of your population is so not graduating, yeah. you're just three out of 10. Uh, so your numbers are really going crazy on what it's costing you by not doing this. Um, so how do we change the future? Everybody okay? We want to change the future. Let's do it. <laughs> do, do you see that? We're, well, we're going to create a community around you. I'm going to keep saying that. There's a learning community around you, and I want you to discover them. They're already forming, and they will be, be getting more and more uh, developed. And so why, why, why do you need a community? All you got to do is sit out on these tests and get it done, right? Folks, education is easier in a community. It's vastly easier. Why? You offer your strengths to help others when they're weak. How many in this room are really good at math? Any any math peeps? No math peeps. A uh, little bit? Decent. Decent. Yeah. There. Here, here's Decent. two half hands, okay? We'll take, ha we'll take a half hand. How many of you are good at science? Science. Oh. Fish. Here's a half hand. Now, when you have a question in science, what are you going to do with it? Sit on it? Go into your room, put your headphones on, forget about it. Why'd you say, hey, Brittany, I got a problem. <laughs> I need some help. You're pretty good at this. Can you help me? You already now Educated know you. someone that's pretty good, feels pretty comfortable in science. She got a full ride, folks. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? That means she did really well in science. Okay, mm -hmm. right? Most things. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not math. And, but not math, but she <laughs> no. got her science down. So do you see all of a sudden you've got a friend that's going to say, hey, man, I'm not catching this. And there's no teachers sitting around with a paycheck. They're ready to help me. But I got Brittany now, and she'll help me. Education is easier when you have folks who are working in the community with you. How many of you are good at social studies? You enjoy politics and you enjoy the community. There, we got two folks. Lynette loves social science. You love social science. Wonderful. Uh, and how many of you are good at English and language arts? There's the English folks. You like that English, uh, don't you? Lot. Okay, you guys love English, don't you? No. <laughs> no. You see how, you see? Not with the, there we go. So we're going to have a conversation between your English skills and their social science skills and their half math skills. You see, even in our room, we could do better on the test if we just got together. Mm -hmm. So we got you together. Now, so, so do you understand why we're getting you together as much as we can? So we can put that community together and bring it together. Let alone all the other things I'm going to talk about in a second on what we've done. Um, and so, okay, I got to take a break here. Uh, my, my, I think my film is going to go belly up. Why didn't that? Oh, I see. I've got five more minutes. That's good.